And I mean, it seems that there was still one more uh, IGO request for a floor. So I would like to go back a bit and offer the floor to Caribbean community representative. You have the floor. Thank you very much, co-chair. Congratulations to you, co-chairs, and to the members of the Bureau on your election. Thanks are also expressed to Ms. Margareta Wallstrom and to the UNISDR Secretariat for the organization of this meeting, and also for support to Sedima's work. Sedima supports the perspective that the Hyogo framework for action remains relevant. Continuity is critical, and the emphasis in the post-2015 HFA must be on effective and efficient implementation. Our Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy 2014 to 2024 will be the implementation vehicle for the post-2015 HFA within our participating states. Specific priorities identified are as follows. Strengthened institutional arrangements, increased and sustained knowledge management and learning, improved integration of disaster risk reduction at the sectoral levels, and strengthened and sustained community resilience. Within this context, six areas are recommended for more explicit treatment within the post-2015 HFA framework. One, integration of climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. A more comprehensive approach to the treatment of hazard risk is required. Joint plans of action at the national level are strongly recommended. With respect to risk, climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction actors should be viewed as one community of practice. Two, strengthen the focus on more frequently occurring smaller events, which may occur at a localized or in the peculiar case of SIDS at the national level. The cumulative impacts of these events should also be specifically treated. Three, greater attention to and strengthen capacities for addressing high impact climate related events will be required due to the effects of climate change accumulated and increasing exposure to risk. This is a specific consideration for SIDS given their high vulnerability. Four, empowerment of communities and other local level actors to address disaster risk. Five, a strengthened evidence base to inform decision making. In this regard, the role of science and technology is pivotal. Synergies must be built with the ongoing dialogue on the global framework for climate services and the role which this can play as it relates to climate risk. Six, explicit treatment of the role of physical planning, ecosystems, and environmental management in creating buffers against hazard impacts. Going forward, the consistent treatment of risk within the post-2015 HFA and sustainable development agendas is appropriate. Emphasis should be on resilient development and the agenda of small island development, developing states, already spoken to by colleagues, remains relevant. Finally, Co-Chair, in view of the changing nature of risk, including changes in climate risks posed by climate change, funding for disaster risk reduction should be included in both humanitarian and development funding streams, and the link between the two should be explicit. Resource support should be provided to strengthen both national and regional frameworks. The preparatory process for the World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 and the World Humanitarian Summit 2016 offer spaces for common representation of this position. Sedima remains committed to supporting our participating states in this process. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of CARICOM.